We must determine the structure of some molecule based on the NMR data, but it's also based on this statement right here. And let's begin by analyzing that statement. We can see that our unknown compound undergoes catalytic hydrogenation to yield 224-trimethylpentane. Let's draw 224-trimethylpentane. So pentane means five carbons, two, three, four, five. At carbon two, we had a pair of methyl groups, and at carbon four, we had a single methyl group. And this is the result of catalytic hydrogenation. Catalytic hydrogenation basically takes some unknown structure, and we will show that it is an alkene. It takes an alkene, and it reacts it with hydrogen along with a catalyst. And what happens is the alkene is converted into an alkane. This is a reaction from organic one. We recall that an alkene is a molecule that contains a carbon-carbon double bond somewhere. And then an alkane, we have all carbon-carbon single bonds, which we can see is true in our product. So what this all means is that our unknown structure is an alkene. And we simply have to figure out where the double bond is going to be located. So let's take the product, which provides us with the basic skeletal framework of our unknown structure. Let's paste it in here a few times and let's understand that somewhere in here is a double bond. Now, we can't just put it anywhere. For example, we could not put it there because then that carbon would have five bonds. Nor can we put it here, there, or there. All of those positions would create a five bonded carbon, which we cannot have. However, we can put the double bond here potentially. We could also put it there. And then some of us might think of a third possibility in which we put it here. However, let's convince each other that these two structures are actually the same. Now, how can that be? Well, let's name them. So if you circle or highlight the longest chain of carbons here, you would have five carbons. You would have a double bond at carbon number one. So right there, you would have a one pentene. Notice we're saying pentene because of the double bond. Then at carbon number two, we would have a methyl group. We would actually have a pair of methyl groups here at carbon number four. This one here is number three. So if we put that all together, we would have two, four, four, di, no, trimethyl. Of course, there's three methyl groups. So that would be trimethyl and then one pentene. Now look at this molecule here. If you highlight the longest chain of carbons that includes the double bond, you're gonna get the same thing. You're gonna get a double bond that begins at carbon one. You're going to get a methyl group right there at carbon two. And then you're going to get a pair of methyl groups at carbon four. So this would actually have the same name as this molecule. So that means that these two are identical. We don't have to consider both of them. So we can erase this as a possibility because it is redundant. And now our challenge is to figure out which of these two remaining possibilities is the correct one. Whoops. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, this is where the NMR comes in, of course. And what we would want to do on each of these structures is basically determine the number of NMR signals. And this is a good thing to practice. Now, let's begin with the first structure. We can see that th this carbon has three hydrogens coming off of it. So does this carbon, and so does that carbon. Now, those are all chemically equivalent carbons, and therefore, together, we would have a signal for those nine hydrogens right there. Similarly, on the other structure, we have these nine equivalent hydrogens. Therefore, we would expect there to be a signal indicating those nine chemically equivalent hydrogens. So, so far it's a tie. There's no way to distinguish them. However, it might be instructive to then look at this carbon here. Now, over here, we only have one hydrogen. Over here, we would actually have two hydrogens. So this would be a chemically unique hydrogen and therefore it would have its own signal. And these would have their own signal as well. Now we move on up to this carbon and that has three hydrogens. That also has three hydrogens. So you would get a signal for those three hydrogens. And then you would also get a signal for those three hydrogens. This would be one hydrogen, of course. This would be two hydrogens. And then finally, we move on to this carbon right here. This would have three hydrogens. And then this carbon over here would have, well, it would have at least one signal for those hydrogens. We might get into the fact that there could be unique signals here if they were, for example, enantiotopic or diastereotopic hydrogens. 
but it turns out we don't have to get into those weeds right now. So let's just assign these a signal together. We can already make a determination here because here is the key insight. This structure, the first structure, would have a pair of signals that represent three hydrogens. So we would get a signal for these three hydrogens and then a different signal for those three hydrogens. Whereas the other structure would only have one signal that corresponds to three hydrogens. So let's see how this can help us distinguish the answer. We go back up to the NMR and we look at the numbers that are in the magenta color. Now, these are kind of unhelpful numbers. What you wanna do is pick the smallest of the magenta numbers, which is 865, and then just divide each number by the smallest one. So for example, whoa, if you take 865 and divide it by 865, you would just get one. If you take 875 and divide it by 865, then you would get approximately one. We can do some rounding here. If you do 1750 divided by, 18, by 865, you would get approximately two. 2612 divided by 865 is approximately three. And then 8100 divided by 865 is approximately nine. Now here is the telltale signal. Notice this signal right here corresponds to a methyl group because it represents three hydrogens. But we'll notice that there is only one methyl group indicated by the NMR data. This is the key insight. We should only have one methyl group. Now, if we go down to our possible structures, again, the first structure had two potential methyl groups, whereas the second structure has only one methyl group right here in yellow. So because we only want the structure with one methyl group, this becomes the correct answer to the question. So if we erase all these little bubbles and so forth, we can clean up the structure a little bit. And we have the answer. Whoops. So this would be the correct answer to your structure as opposed to the first possibility. And again, you probably, when typing it into the answer box in your homework system, you don't have to include the little hydrogens. So we can kind of shave those off and create the final answer.